Hi there, welcome to the Quantum Leap podcast. Uh, I'm very excited today to have with me Josh Myers, uh, alias Uncle Percy from OE of Little Faith. Uh, Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Um, let's dive straight in. Um, I really want to talk to you about your experiences on uh, on Quantum Leap, of course, but um, perhaps you can share a bit about yourself uh, with the audience. Tell us where we might have seen you in the past, uh, how you got into into the world of TV. Sure. I was... Um... Uh, I went to school at Northwestern in Chicago, and then uh, right from there, I moved to Amsterdam and worked for a comedy theater, uh, an improv comedy theater. So if you were in Amsterdam from 98 to 2002 and saw a guy with a big ponytail on stage. Uh, I knew I'd seen you somewhere. Me. Oh, yeah, that could be it. That could be it. <laughs> um, and we did, the, we did the Edinburgh Festival uh, several times, which was, uh, which was great. And then, yeah, I moved back to the States. Um, a good friend of mine, Ike Barinholtz, who some of your viewers might know, um, really talented, uh, talented actor, comedian. Uh, he and I did a two person show and then got on mad TV. Um, I was on mad TV for a couple years. I did the last season of that 70 show that a lot of people, uh, really don't like me, uh, because of, because they were like, you stole Eric's girlfriend. And I was like, no, no, no. Topher Grace went to go be in. Spider-Man two or three. I just, I got a job like that. Donna is not a real person. <laughs> She's a character, but I was Donna's new boyfriend in that last season. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know the bits and bobs here and there. I did, uh, I did a series on Amazon that I quite like called red Oaks that has three seasons. Uh, there's sort of like a shortened third season, but that, uh, that I really liked. And yeah, I don't know, sort of always, bits and pieces and cobbling it together or do some writing and do some acting and got this job on quantum leap, which brought me here to be with you. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, so you, so you sort of started off doing stand up and then moved into, into comic acting whilst keeping. Yeah. The... I mean, yeah. I did more, more improv than stand up. Stand up's okay. always weirded me out a little bit. I've done some, but not, mm -hmm. uh, I would not, consider myself a stand-up but yeah improv <coughs> leading into more television work and uh and yeah yeah so that's that's how it went down and do you have much of a because although this episode of quantum leap has plenty of comic elements particularly for percy it's it's quite a quite a dramatic piece do you do you have yeah. do, you, do you delve much into the dramatic side uh i i mean sort of i a, always different feet? I love an opportunity to do something like this um, and sort of like when I get cast and then show up <clears throat> on set, there's, it's clear like the family around me is sort of my, my TV family. Uh, mm -hmm. Like they do a lot of drama. They'll do a lot of sort of our drama and sort of that live in that world. And I feel like a bit of an outsider um, but I also like that because I come from sort of real comedy. Um, and like Raymond Lee clearly has done a lot of comedy and he's super funny and incredibly charming. Um, but it is, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm sort of getting into the drama kids club uh, for a week or two weeks when I do a show like this and uh, yeah, really enjoy it. And I worry sometimes that I'm doing something that might be, perceived as funny when it shouldn't be and i'm like is that <laughs> was that okay like i don't because i don't want to sort of live in a tone that doesn't work well for the world so i'm always eager to get a note from a director or if raymond's like oh hey man, not not on this line but everyone was good with uh with whatever i did so i hope it, it came out all right that's really interesting uh, because I mean we we noticed uh, it, that that episode had much more um, much more comedy than any of the the previous ones. So did that did that go both ways? Um, you talk about you know getting getting notes saying yeah maybe maybe tone it down a bit. Did your comic background rub off on Ray particularly? Uh, was yeah like you say he was superb in this episode. Do you think he was, yeah. he was picking up any vibes from you? I don't know. I mean, I think that 
he he's a pretty talented guy and he's just naturally very funny uh his Mm. charisma is not sort of like oh it only works on camera it works in person too so i don't know that he needed much from me certainly i feel like the asides that he has to addison are like really where he shines um particularly in an episode like this where he's dealing with something that's so um yeah you know, scary of like, I have to perform an exorcism, but to have those little aside takes, um, really, I think that's sort of the levity that a show like Quantum Leap, uh, really does well, um, and is able to take you out of sort of the seriousness and, and let you be, you know, watching a show and having fun. Um, also that this was the Halloween episode. I thought they needed some of that levity to sort of take away from the, the horror elements of it all. Um, But yeah, I I thought it was really fun. And also just the way they shot it to have it be sort of all those canted angles and really, um, you know, take a lot of inspiration from horror films. Uh, You know, I'm sure the look is very different in this episode to uh, the other episodes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, that, that was something else that we noticed that it's, uh, that the direction seemed very much, uh, on point for, for horror. Is, is horror a genre that you're particularly fond of or familiar with? I love it. Like going to a horror movie with friends is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and then the bummer, like, it's not a bummer, I guess, but if I miss a movie in theaters or if, you know, I'm out of town when my friends are going to go see it, then I won't see that movie. And my girlfriend gets too scared to watch like real horror movies. And I don't like watching them alone because I might get too scared. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I was very excited when I saw this. It was like, oh, this is The Exorcist um, or an exorcism episode. I've seen plenty of exorcism movies. Uh and it's not like, oh, I've seen enough of them. Um, I'm always eager <laughs> eager to see the next one. So I think uh, all of that's kind of um, leading me around to just wondering, uh, going back a step to the, the kind of the audition process and why this episode? How, was, how did you hear about it? What, what actually got you involved in it in the first place? Was it because, hey, you know, this, this show's coming back and here's a Halloween episode. It's something I want to aim for. Um, I, I got the audition through my agent and it was, uh, I mean, just still because of COVID protocols, I had to self tape it and send it in. Mm -hmm. Um, and I sort of like, when it came across, I was like quantum leap, like quantum leaps happening. Um, because it wasn't on TV yet. Uh, they hadn't been promoting it yet. The week we were shooting, was the week they premiered. Um, so there was one day at lunch where they had one of the huge sound stages. Mm-hmm. Um, they had like, we're going to have a screening at lunch. Uh, and so everyone got their lunch and got to go in there and sort of, I mean, I think, you know, for the, it was super nice for the crew and the cast to be able to see it and sort of be together. Still a shame to be under COVID protocols where everyone's masked up and, um, you know, sitting apart from one another. But it was, uh, from my perspective, it was really a delight to be there for that week and then to know that, like, oh, then the numbers are going to come out the next day and I hope, like, reviews are going to come out. (laughs) I'm hoping it goes well. And everyone was in very good spirits. And, you know, one of the executive producers is like, yeah, like, we're really happy. And um, that's a nice mood to be around on a show. Um, Because I've also done, like, I've done a guest star on an episode of a show when they found out they were canceled or they found out and it was a live taping in front of a live studio audience and it was like it was a show that had i want to say 13 episodes but they cut it off at 10 and they called everyone into this uh this dressing room to like tell them and the executive producer's like josh what are you doing here i was like i don't know they said everyone come in here and it was like well you can stay and it's like bad news everyone so this was uh this was nice to be there for a good one um and yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a fun fun atmosphere because of that. So that's um, yeah, that that really interests me because obviously, as kind of um, a sort of semi anthology show, 
I guess a, a good proportion of the, or at least a good proportion of the, uh, the actors and the talent in front of the camera that were there watching this screening weren't involved in it. But did, did you still yeah. get that, that vibe, that sort of feeling from everyone around you that this was, this was something that you were a part of and you, you wanted it to be a success? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I, I'm, I'm, I root for every show really. Like I, I want mm. shows to be good and for people to like shows. I don't want shows to be on TV that people are like, who's watching this? Like, yeah. um, and yeah, I think they're also, you know, there's so much love for the original quantum leap that it sort of people were, uh, buzzing a bit about like, Oh, what's the new one going to be? And who's the new, Scott Bakula esque character. And uh, yeah. And also, you know, because of the way this show goes, you know, a lot of people are like, are you going to come back on this show? And it's like, no, this is my, my story's yeah. over. Like it's very unlikely. Like, we're not going to be back in 1930, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so it was, you know, it's fun to be, part of that cast that is in for one week because you do so much stuff and you do it all with Raymond. Um, and it, I, I think it's an interesting sort of gig for him and that he's always sort of being dropped in the middle of week to week, a brand new sort of guest cast that he has to create some sort of a rapport with. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's not, it's not like, a sitcom for him where it's the same eight people and maybe you're going to have one new person. He's always in the midst of, I don't know, eight, 10, 12 new people, um, mm. which I think is, is pretty unique. Um, but yeah, I was, I, I liked my TV family. We got along really well and you sort of create that familial vibe. Um, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Could you, could you tell me a little bit more about that? that family atmosphere that you had with the, uh, with the guest cast. Cause yeah, like you say, eight, eight, 10, 12, however many it was. Uh, actually, I think it was probably only about six or seven, wasn't it? With this, this yeah. group all coming together at once, all having these pre existing relationships, but just to come together for eight days filming and then, and then split apart. How, how was that? Um, I mean, it's always nice when you meet someone, it's like, oh, hey, you're my brother, you're my aunt, like, you're my brother's wife. Yeah. And, uh, and then to like, to go see your house as well, and like to exist in this house, this spooky house that was like, everyone was telling us like, oh, this is where they shot the best little whorehouse in Texas, like this old Dolly Parton movie that everyone starts talking about, like, they're like, oh, love best little whorehouse in Texas. And it might be fine, but, but everyone was really leaning into that. Um, I did not know but, that. We've, we, was, yeah. Is that is that is that where that was filmed? It was in that house on the Universal yeah. lot. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was called like the Chicken Ranch or something. But yeah, yeah. Um, so that was there. That was that house, which they had to make a lot of improvements to before we went in to shoot because they hadn't shot there in years. It was sort of just a thing. Yeah. Uh, that I feel like you would drive by on the Universal Studios tour, but um, they had to like reinforce the second floor. It was like, nobody can go <laughs> on that second floor until we do some work. <laughs> um, and there had been a fire like at some point on the lot years and years ago. So they had to like build um, sort of a fake fireplace or just something that would mm -hmm. work like a fireplace without being a fireplace. Um, and uh so yeah, the crew had their work cut out for them. But as soon as you like one of the first scenes we shot was sitting around that dining room table and you you start to feel what it's like in the space and you're in the the period clothes and the costumes and it really starts to sort of take take shape. Yeah, so that that reminds me, yeah, so um Universal obviously uh very that, that that's a very well known um set that you were on that that whole strip um the the street has has had a lot of films made on it and and other things yeah. uh nearby we were, as well what what was it like being in such a kind of um an iconic uh part of hollywood um i mean yeah that back lot is amazing also our house where we were 
right below that house is Elm Street um, from yeah, Nightmare on Elm right. Street. And they yeah. they shot yeah. a lot of the uh, like the trick or treating stuff was shot on Elm Street, um, which also adds another level to the sort of, oh, the mm-hmm. Halloween episode. And um, the sort of, to me, the most funny and I'm sure to uh, some people that were on the Universal Studios tour, the most disappointing is we were the house was right above the Jaws Lagoon, um, which I don't okay. believe any of Jaws was actually shot there. But if you're on the Universal Studios tour, spoiler alert, there's a Jaws thing and you you pull up next to this lagoon and uh, there's like fire sort of goes off. These barrels explode mm-hmm. Um, and this giant shark sort of like comes out of the water at you, this animatronic shark. But because we were right up the hill, they had to kill the audio for the whole sort of, I think it's like one of the most spectacular moments of the Universal Studios tour. But because we were shooting and we needed to have clean audio, the tour would continue, but everything would happen with no audio <laughs> at this at this Jaws Lagoon. Um, and as you'd like be walking by, you'd see this shark popping out and sort of fire and all these people just sitting there, but like, no, no oomph behind it. Um, because of us. It, it, it's been 30 years since I've done that tour and the jaws bit is the only bit that I remember, uh, from my childhood. Yeah. So <laughs> you just spoiled that for some, some poor 10 year old kid. Uh, yeah. but well worth it. Um, yes, for, exactly. for definite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting you mentioned about the the period clothes because I'm I'm always very interested in how everything that's going on around you must must be very helpful to the actor for kind of getting getting into the the spirit of it. No pun intended. Um, but yeah. this is this is the first episode of the season where there's been some real special effects, some some CGI effects going on um, that obviously you couldn't see. Is that something that you're used to to dealing with? Um, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't too jarring. There was, uh, there was an actress who was playing like a, sh- a shadow essentially. Okay. And she would sort of be lurking in the back of some scenes, but a lot of times you just see her like out, uh, in the tent where we would go, where we weren't needed on set. And there was just like a girl in a black bodysuit and like <laughs> creepy makeup and black hair. And, uh, she was very nice, um, but uh, <laughs> but there was like yeah there was there was that element. But all the all the special effects stuff came in later, um, yeah. Which made it which made it fun to watch back and see sort of what was actually happening there. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I guess um, in in all your interactions with the the rest of the actors, you probably got some. Um, maybe some more amusing memories um uh, maybe some some slightly offbeat ones is there anything that you can can share well my favorite thing uh cheeto played the doctor and he was like a college football player um i feel like he's still like a boxer a fighter <laughs> he's really fit um and he uh, dropped something at some point. He dropped his script and he could physically could not bend over because he would just rip through his like the period pants that he was wearing. Um, and I was like, oh, I can get this for you because I'm not as fit as you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but it was really funny to see him like drop his his sides, his like small script and look down and just be like, there's no way I can't I can't physically bend over um, to get that. And then also like, you know, to do something like this with a lot of special effects and with the horror element to it, um, Carrie, who played Daisy, was just so excited to be possessed and was so excited to get the scars on her face and to like to go into the makeup trailer and have them tell her what she was going to what they were going to do, what their plan was. And she was just over the moon um, with with getting to play this possessed girl, which yeah, it's a, it's a fun thing to, uh, to sink your jagged little teeth into, um, if given the opportunity. Um, that's really cool to know. Um, so with all that, um, with all that kind of 
upbeat stuff, I guess, going on uh, against or the, the the levity against the the scares. Was there anything? Was there anything a bit creepy happening behind the scenes at all? Not really. I mean, the only thing. <laughs> It's not creepy, but when I, and I, spoiler alert, I get arrested at the end of this episode by a constable that we use these like vintage uh, handcuffs, which were small and sort of, they're not shaped super well. They're kind of in an oval. And the first time they put them on me, they sort of like pinched my wrist and it was in a rehearsal. And I was like, Hey, can we just like run through that again so that doesn't happen and it was like well what's wrong with them i was like well they just like they like sort of nipped onto my wrist and they were like all right well like let's try it we tried a couple times and then we're shooting it and uh i get the cuff slapped on me and they truly like took a bite out of my wrist and i (laughs) might have i might have this little mark forever and ever i don't don't know know. um and i was like would they were like was that better and i was like no it was much worse much worse (laughs) Um, and you don't want to yowl in the moment. Uh, you just want to be like, oh, shucks, I'm getting these handcuffs on me and you take me off. But uh, And you don't want the guy playing the constable to feel bad for digging into you. Not his fault. But um, if that was creepy and scary, I don't think so. But it was a bummer. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Um, maybe one last, one last thing I'd just like to ask you about um so what one of the things because this is effectively a whodunit um the, yeah. there's all of the cast are doing that playing that wonderful game of trying to drop some hints to the audience that it might be them um yeah when it actually isn't did you did you have any particular process for approaching that and as the person who would eventually be unveiled as the mastermind behind it all um just dropping those subtle hints and winks to the audience without dropping too much? How did you get in the headspace yeah, well, for that? I think that, you know, I always have marked down in a script, like what's just happened and what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. And um, I did, I did get a note early on. There's a moment where uh, Shane, who plays my brother is like getting angry at the, at the, dining room table and he's going to be cut out of the will. And I was sort of enjoying that. And they were like, you shouldn't enjoy that that much. And I sort of thought like, well, but I would, because that would mean the money could come to me. Um, Also as the sort of, as the bad guy, I didn't want to lean into too much of like, I'm the bad guy. Uh, I let Mm -hmm. other people do that um, to throw things off. Although we also think, um, that uh that my brother's wife elise she was i think the real bad guy i was a bit of a patsy in all this um if clearly if we're we're splitting hairs (laughs) yes yeah i did it for love she did it for like hollywood hollywood dreams yeah 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 that's a reasonable reason to uh to poison a young girl i think for your daughter (laughs) yeah Yeah. not my daughter her daughter her daughter, but her she daughter. wanted it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so there we go. Now we definitely need a sequel to the episode. Um, so Uncle Percy can uh, have have his moment to, to justify yeah, himself, maybe. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Absolutely. Um, well, that's been great. I mean, looking to, uh, I mentioned a sequel to the episode, looking to the future, maybe. Um, can I ask what's what you've got? coming up uh, in, in your world in the coming weeks and months. Is there anywhere that our viewers yeah. can check you out? Well, it's almost Christmas, so I got Christmas coming up. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend and I did our tree last night, and I couldn't find my charger. I was going to have our tree behind us, uh, behind me. Instead, I have some of my girlfriend's equestrian ribbons. This weekend, I'm shooting a short film uh, about the Anne Frank gift shop. Um, with uh, some really talented people. I'm excited. Mickey Rapkin, um, who wrote the book uh, for Pitch Perfect before it was turned into a movie. Um, he's oh, okay. written and uh, is directing this. Um, Kate Burton uh, is in it, which I'm very excited to work with her and some uh, some great other actors. 
so that's going to be a short film. I'm not sure where that will show up. And then uh, I'm going to Chicago to shoot uh, an independent pilot about uh, gig workers uh, in the gig economy and how they get screwed over. That's called resignation. Um, and I have a really sort of fun role as uh, as sort of someone who takes advantage of uh, of a gig worker. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then looking forward to the holidays and seeing what the new year has in store. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you've got some good stuff coming up. Um, as you get details, do do drop us a line about them and we can uh, we can add them to the uh, description under the YouTube video. So the viewers Excellent. will be able to uh, to find it from there. Um, but look, it's been been really great talking to you. Thank you for your time. Um, no have pleasure. a very, very Merry Christmas. Um, and uh, yeah, catch you later, Josh. Cheers. All right. Be well. Bye.